The Whistler. Sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the Whistler's strange story, Incident at a Royal Grande. The conversations were varied at the Hilltop Cafe on Highway 101. That was because of the way customers would come and go, like Eddie Martin, owner and operator of the Martin Truck Line. He stopped in regularly, enjoyed his coffee, a chat with Hazel, the Hilltop's genial proprietor. He was a hard worker, Eddie, and had come quite a way in the difficult and sometimes risky business of hauling freight by truck between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Hazel knew him well and liked him. Their conversations usually ran along the same lines with a constant background of jukebox music. Oh, the coffee's fine, Hazel. <laughs> That's what I like about you. So dependable. You like you, Eddie. Thanks. Always right on the schedule. Oh, try to convince my wife of that, will you? Huh? Well, Ethel still worry about it? Oh, never. I guess I could push trucks up and down 101 for another 20 years. And she'll keep thinking I'm going through the rail, a wreck, a burn-up. Yeah, can't blame her. The work's dangerous. <laughs> Besides, there ought to be more for the boss to do than just drive. Oh, I've got to. It's not easy to build a business, you know. It takes a lot of work. You're doing all right. You've got three trucks now. Uh-huh. And I'm going to buy three more. But it takes money. And until I put some new deals over, well, I just can't finance them. Overextended? Oh, you said it. You'll make it. I hope so. Oh, Ethel's sure getting tired of the plane playing second fiddle to a truck and then the trailer. What does she do when you're away on these long hauls? Oh, she keeps the house and the books. She goes dancing once in a while with Vic, I guess. Vic? I'm not sure that's a good idea. Oh, <laughs> best driver I got, Hazel. Uh-huh. Smoothest, too. Besides, he thinks he's heaven's gift to women. <laughs> well, you can't hate him, hate him for that. They all fall for him. But Vic Hamilton's a great guy. He's my best friend. Just like one of the family. Just like one of the family. Vic Hamilton is like one of the family. That's what Eddie always says, doesn't he, Vic? You've heard him say so yourself a hundred times, haven't you? Yes. And it's given you a confident feeling. You have plans, haven't you, Vic? Plans which include a number of things belonging to Eddie. Plans which even include his wife, Ethel, for a little while. Hello? Ethel, Vic. Oh, yeah. Honey, I, I hate to break a date, you know that, but... Well, something's come up, and... I, I... know. You can't make it. All right, Vic. Not mad at me. I wanted to see you. I guess you can wait. Oh, sure, honey. I, I miss seeing you, too. I, I mean, with Eddie away and all, but... This is a business deal. Vic, are you sure? Are you sure you're not trying to make a fool out of me? Hmm? You mean somebody else? I mean somebody else, yes. Oh, no, honey. Oh. Skip it, Vic. I'll tell you all about the deal when I see you, and then you'll believe me. All right. Say you're not mad at me. I'm not mad at you. That a girl. I'll see you. Bye. Goodbye, Vic. <laughs> It isn't easy keeping everything going smoothly, is it, Vic? You're a busy man these days. But with your plans concerning Eddie's trucking line, Ethel is necessary, and you have to keep her happy. You wonder just what you're going to tell her as you leave your apartment and walk down the street to Ted Reese's place. You do have a business appointment, don't you? Only one that Ethel wouldn't understand or approve of. And you're not that friendly. Hey, Vic, what kept you? I'm sorry, Rizzer. I had to make a phone call. 
Oh, hello, Ann. Hello, Victor. Skip it, sis. He's here to talk to me, business. Oh, well, don't mind me. We won't. Victor's a change in plans. Oh? We've been barking up the wrong tree putting you after, Ethel. Well, I've always told you that. I'm yeah. talking, Ann. We'll get nowhere trying to take her away from Eddie. She doesn't control the company. Oh, great. After I spend days working on it. Mm, night, too. Ann, go fix us a couple of sandwiches and don't hurry. Okay, I can take a hint. What's the deal, Roger? We can still break Eddie. Don't worry about that. Matter of fact, he's ripe for the kill. Good. The guy's overextended himself. Needs cash. <laughs> Who doesn't? This is different. He's over his head. He couldn't cover the loss of a single buck. And he's going to have a few to cover. I don't get you. You will, Vic. You remember the time Eddie lost that load of stuff to those hijackers? Yeah. Well, add it up, boy, add it up. He's going to lose again the same way. Well, so where does that get us? He's covered by insurance. If he loses again, that big load, he's a bad risk, Vic. A very bad risk. The insurance companies will want to write him off. Pay him off and write him off. Oh. I see. Sure you do. You're a bright boy, Vic. And that's why I'm counting on you to make it look good. Me? Look, I couldn't pull off a thing like that alone. No, no, no. You'll just be riding along, that's all. Relief driver with Vic on the night we hijack him. My strong arm man, Fred, will kind of shove you around. You'll take a little bump on the head, maybe. Nothing more. Just, just to make it look good. And for it, you get a cut. Say, around ten grand. Now, that I like. For ten grand, I can look awful good. And you can also do a little complaining to the insurance people that are on. You know, moan a bit, maybe, about carelessness, shy on cash. You know. Sure, sure, I know, Richard. And without insurance, he's out of business. He won't know what hit him, Vic. And when his truck payments come due, we can buy him out lock, stock, and barrel for chicken feed. Good? Very. I thought you'd see it my way. <laughs> You're all right, Vic. Too many dames, maybe, but you're all right. And how about those sandwiches? There's a couple of tired businessmen out here. Okay, coming up. <laughs> how about that, Vic? A couple of tired businessmen. <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> sure. And they're not so tired that we can't outsmart any Martin. <laughs> Your plans with Ted Reeser are shaping up, aren't they? You're glad that they no longer include Ethel. Because it's more important than ever that you have Eddie's confidence. You've got to know about every shipment so you can advise Reeser on the proper time to strike. It comes less than a week later on an afternoon when you're alone in the dispatch office of the truck line and Eddie comes hurrying in. Oh, big, big, get this, will you? Hey, kid, we're in business. Look at this. Look, but good. Something exciting, Eddie? Oh, I got the Ajax Clark contract, kid. A hundred thousand dollar load to start with. A hundred grand? Yes, sir. Why, their business will set us up and make that order of three new trucks look like nothing. Oh, that's great, Eddie. Uh -huh. You know I'm glad for you. Sure. When's the shipment leave? Oh, tonight. Oh? Oh, well, maybe I ought not to take tonight off. Maybe I better make that run with me. <laughs> I'll say you'd better. I wouldn't have anybody else on that load with me. I'll set it up, Vic. Supervise the loading. We'll pull out at eight sharp. Same route as always. Eight sharp, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's a good deal, Eddie. Well, I'll go home and get some shut eye. Have to be on our toes this trip, huh? <laughs> you leave, hurry outside, and hail a cab. It's time to alert Reezer, isn't it, Vic? And you want no slip-ups. The hijack must be planned for tonight. And you've got to outline the schedule of the run to end, since you and Reezer have decided that it wasn't smart to be seen together. You step from the cab at the Club Marimbo, where Anne will be rehearsing her songs for the evening show, and hurry inside. Uh, come on, honey, come here. Uh, you know that little bar across the street? Come on, we got things to discuss. Yeah, but my very close... Uh, you can skip I, I gotta... that. This is important. Well, all right. I... Well, I'll run over that with you later, Joe, okay? Okay, Annie. All right. You take her arm, hurry her outside, and across the street to the Domino Bar. 
A dark booth and a pair of Manhattan seals the final plans for tonight. Well, that's, that's it, Anne. Just get it straight and uh, tell your brother. Mm-hmm. Leaving L.A., 8 p.m. sharp. Driving north, 101, should reach Arroyo Grande around 1 a.m. Check. Okay. Now, that's all you have to do, honey. Mm-hmm. Just tell Big Brother. We'll do the rest. It's almost 7 o'clock when you return to your apartment. You're certain that everything is going to work out according to plan, aren't you, Vic? And when it's all over, your part in the affair will bring you a nice reward. Yes, 10000 at least. And you tell yourself that's not bad for one evening's work. You glance at your watch. There's still more than an hour before you're due at the warehouse. You pour yourself a drink and take your time as you change clothes. Then, as you're about to leave your apartment. Hello, Vic. Well, Ethel. What uh, brings you around? I want to talk to you. They better make it some other time, baby. I'm doing with the warehouse. Wait, Vic. It's that important? Yes. So important that I want it settled tonight. I went over to the warehouse to see you this afternoon, but Eddie showed up. So I waited down the street. Well, what's on your mind? It's, um, it's all over between us, Vic. What? It's been on my mind for quite some time, though. This, this isn't fair to Eddie. He doesn't deserve it. Oh, so, uh, that's it, huh? I'm glad I woke up. up. Came to my senses before it was too late. I'm so in love with Eddie. I guess I always have been. I always will be. I see. You don't seem to be terribly broken up about it. Well, that's all, after all. Of course. As a matter of fact, it's all very convenient for you, isn't it, our breaking up? Now you have the green light. The go ahead. You can devote all your time to Anne. Anne? The girl at the nightclub. I followed you to that bar across the street. Oh, did you, uh, Ethel? I was sitting in the next booth. I, I couldn't help overhearing your, um... Plans for the evening. Plans? What do you mean? I can put two and two together. You're going to help someone hijack Eddie's truck, aren't you? Am I? Do you think I'm going to stand by and let you do that? What are, what are you going to do? Look, Vic, it's not too late to call it off. I won't mention a word of it to Eddie. And if I don't call it off? I'll have to call the police. <laughs> I don't think so, baby. I will, Vic. I swear I will. I'll turn you in. You can't do this to Eddie. I got news for you. You're not going to turn anybody in. You're going to keep your pretty mouth shut, understand? What makes you so sure? Figure it out for yourself. You turn me in and I'll be brought out into the open. Our little romance, Ethel. I'll see to it that Eddie finds out everything, all that's been going on behind his back for the past year. (laughs) And I used to think you were so wonderful. I'd have done almost anything you wanted. Most girls would, and you will, too, in this instance, unless you want Eddie to know all about little Ethel, his devoted wife. You couldn't do that. I could, easily. Now, be a smart girl. If you love Eddie as much as you say you do, and if you want to hold on to him, you don't want to see him hurt, you'll play this my way. But, Dick, the trucking company, he'll lose everything. He can start again. I'll help him. I'll be in a position to throw in plenty of business. Besides, he'll still have you. That'll help a lot more. Yes, Vic. I guess it will. Good, good. Now I've got to move along. Important engagement. Ethel stands there for a moment, staring at you. Then, without a word, she turns and walks out. You're certain she won't carry out her threat to call the police, aren't you, Vic? Confident that nothing is going to interfere with your rendezvous at Arroyo Grande. And that confidence is still with you an hour later as Eddie wheels the big truck out of the warehouse with you sitting beside him. On schedule, you roll along the open highway. Occasionally, you glance at Eddie, puff quietly on a cigarette, thinking about the 10000 and how you'll spend it. Yeah, I, uh, I had a talk with Ethel tonight. 
Mom? Yeah. She worries too much. What about? How oh, about me and the truck company? These night runs. I guess you can't blame her. No, no, I guess you can't. You know, Vic, I've been thinking. Maybe she's right. I ought to look after the office more anyway. That would make her happy. For sure. Of course, I can't do in that for a while yet. A few more hauls, and then I can turn the whole thing over to you. Me? Oh, sure, sure. You take care of the trucks and the drivers. I'll handle the office and the warehouse. And I'm going to cut you in for a bigger percentage, too. How do you like that? That's swell. That's nice of you, Eddie, but... Oh, no, you deserve it, kid. You deserve it. You've been a lot of help to me. You lean back, Vic. Continue puffing Vic. quietly no, on your cigarette. Everything's going to be all yeah, right, isn't it? Eddie doesn't suspect. You're certain that it. Ethel hasn't told him a thing. Fair, you know. Oh, Eddie. Yeah? There's a guy in a car behind you blinking his headlights. He wants to pass. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Wow, look at that car. Classy job, huh? These new cars are certainly swell. Hey, Vic, how would you like to own one like that? What? That car that just passed. Snappy job, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You recognize the big car, don't you, Vic? Reese's car. And suddenly the first twinge of nervousness hits you. You fumble in your pocket for another cigarette. Notice your hand is trembling as you light it. You grow more and more tense as time wears on. The black coffee you stop for at Santa Barbara helps a little, doesn't it? Then you're on the road again, roaring north, towards your rendezvous at Arroyo Grande. <laughs> You, uh, got that little blonde on your mind, Vic? Blonde? Back there when we stopped for coffee. Oh, no. I don't worry about dames. Uh, I don't them worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> you sure got enough of them on a string. Uh, hey, when you ever gonna settle now? I'm in no hurry, Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? Listen. Cops. Cops? So what? They're right behind us. Oh, relax, relax. We're not breaking the law. And probably head for some of those hot rod drivers. Hey, you see? Gone right past us. What's the matter with you, Vic? What are you jumpy about? What? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> ah, you think they were after us or something? No. No, of course not. The sound of that police siren did something to you, didn't it, Vic? You sit back and force yourself to remain calm. Finally, several miles down the road, you approach an intersection. And there, near the lights of a oil station, what you see helps to calm your nerves. The police car parked behind a yellow convertible. One of the officers talking to the driver, writing out a ticket. That's all it was, Vic. The police were after a speeder. You lean back against the seat and breathe a sigh of relief. That was it. Hey, Vic. Yeah? Look up ahead there. Girl standing in the road. You're damn, isn't it, Vic? Standing near the big car. Reza's car parked to the side of the road. You see her in the glare of the truck lights, waving her arms. Slow down, Eddie. We better see what the trouble is. Not on your life. Sorry, baby. No dice. Why don't you stop? I don't like the looks of it. Got my eye on that car. What do you mean? She's not alone. Two men with her. I spotted them back in Santa Barbara when we stopped for coffee. One of those guys was eyeing this load. Are you sure? Yeah. If they're up to something, they'll come after us. You know, Vic, by the time you start up the grade that Eddie will never get away from him. The truck begins to lose speed, and suddenly Reza's car is alongside, and then it cuts in sharply. Eddie slams on the air brakes. Even before the truck stopped rolling, two masked men, Reza and Fred, jump on the running board. Reza on Eddie's side with a gun. Now, Vic, now you've got to make it look good. Okay, Bonnie Oldfield, this is as far as you go. What's the idea? Shut up, Keep punk. your hands on the wheel, driver. Fred, get the other guy out of the cab. Come on, pretty boy. I said, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Maybe this will hurry you up. What do you think you're doing? Hey, wait a minute. We haven't got like all night. All right, take it easy. 
and get your hands off me. Wait a minute, Vic. Don't take any chances. Do like they say, will you? They've got us. Yeah? Vic, don't be a fool. Come on, break it up. Break it up, I said. Hey, please, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He'll kill you. You've got to stop. Your pal's pretty stubborn. Sit here nice and still, driver. I think I can persuade him to quit with this gun. Come on, handsome. Get in the car. Vic. Vic, you all right? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm okay, Eddie. Oh, come on, let's go. We haven't got all night. You, driver, wheel this truck down the road. Turn left at the cemetery. We'll be right behind you. Okay, okay. Come on, Vic. Uh-uh. Your pal's gonna ride in the car with us. And he might get hurt if you try to make a break. Now get moving. Okay. Vic, listen. Do what they tell you, huh? I don't want you to get yourself killed. Okay, Eddie. Okay. All right, driver, roll on ahead. Pally, your shit thinks a lot of you, Vic. Yeah, yeah, he uh, thinks I'm just Grant. How'd I do, Rizzo? Nice performance. You got an A for effort. Everything's worked like a Swiss watch. It's in the bag. <laughs> yeah. I told you I'd make it look good, didn't I? <laughs> The moment Eddie Martin stepped into the Hilltop Cafe that night, Hazel, the Hilltop's genial proprietor, knew that something was wrong. The ever-present smile was gone from his lips. His face was chalk white and drawn. He walked slowly to the counter and sat down. You're late, Eddie. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'm late. Uh, how about a cup of coffee, Hazel? Sure, I saw you coming. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Hey, uh, turn off that music, will you, Hazel? I'm... Well, I'm not in the mood for it. Sure, I'll pull up the plug. Eddie, what's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Hi, Jack Hazel. Two guys jumped us this side of Arroyo Grande. No kidding. Yeah. One of them, a guy named Risa, a cop said, shoved a thirty-eight under my Reaser. nose. Sure. Say, I've heard of him. The other guy hauled Vic off the truck and they slugged him. That's when Vic started swinging. Then they made me drive the truck down the highway and turn off at the cemetery. That where they hoisted the load? No, uh, they didn't get it, Hazel. Before they could start unloading, the cops came up. Cops? Yeah. Reese starting shooting, and so did they. Vic fell back against Reese's car, and, well, a shot that was meant for Reese got Vic. Vic's dead, Hazel. Oh. That's tough. Vic sure fooled me. Too bad some of his dames couldn't have seen him tonight. He had lots of them, you know. He looked good, all right. Sure gonna miss him. And I hate to tell Ethel about this. She thought the world of Vic as a friend of him. Yeah, I know. You told me lots of times how Vic took your wife dancing for you. You know, a highway patrolman said some woman called and tipped off the police that we were going to be hijacked. Yeah? Wonder who that could have been. Let that whistle be your signal for the whistler each Sunday night. Featured in tonight's story were Frank Lovejoy, Eddie Marr, Joan Banks, and Ted DeCorsia. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by David H. Ross. Music by Wilbur Hatch. So tune in at 7.30 next Sunday for another strange tale by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.